I'm a big proponent of free and open source software and as a big fan of free and open source software, today I wanted to talk about one of the most popular pieces of free and open source software on the planet that has done a very good job of destroying itself. And that program is Mozilla Firefox. When we talk about free and open source software, when you talk about the most popular programs that are free and open source software, obviously you got to talk about the GNU slash Linux operating system. Linux is the operating system running on hundreds of millions of servers around the world. You've got to talk about programs like VLC, which is a cross-platform multimedia player that's probably got hundreds of millions of users around the world, possibly billions of users. I don't know how many people have used VLC historically over the years, but it's a large number. The same thing with uh, OpenOffice slash LibreOffice before it was for, you're talking about probably hundreds of millions, if not billions of downloads of that particular suite, uh, that office suite, which is free and open source software. And of course, Mozilla Firefox was once one of the most popular web browsers on the planet. And now as of today, it has something like two to 3% market share as far as browser market share worldwide. Now, what inspired me to make today's video was uh, earlier today, I, I, I don't use Firefox as my main browser anymore. I actually use the Brave browser, but I do have Mozilla Firefox installed on my computer. I forgot it was there and I launched it earlier accidentally and, and I realized, you know what? It had been probably two years since the last time I actually launched Firefox and did anything in Firefox as my browser. You know, I actually uh, spent any real time in it because these days I am using Brave, which is a Chromium based web browser. And, you know, I really like Brave and it does everything that I need a browser to do. And it kind of makes me sad because I used Firefox probably for 20 years. I was a Firefox user when it was uh, uh, initially created. Right? Firefox, I think, came out around 2002 or something. And, you know, I used it until just a couple of years ago. You know, I, I, I had to get off of Firefox because it just wasn't working for me anymore. I, w I wanted to explore something else. I could see the writing on the wall with Firefox as a browser. It, it wasn't it wasn't a good experience for me anymore. And it's not a good experience for a lot of people because you can see a lot of people have given up on Mozilla Firefox. In the early years, you know, it came out in 2002 and I would say it reached its peak, I think around 2009 or so, where it had like a third of the market share, the browser market share. And that was when it was competing, especially with Microsoft's Internet Explorer at that time. But after 2009, its market share has done nothing but drop. And part of that is due to the rise of Google Chrome because Google Chrome came out. And of course, Google has such a, a large marketing campaign. It has so much money. Obviously, anytime you go to Google services like Google search, YouTube, I don't know, probably things like Google Docs, Gmail, whatever it happens to be, you know, they, they promote their own products, such as using Google Chrome as the browser, right? So obviously, a company like Mozilla, a smaller company like Mozilla, can't compete with a large trillion dollar company like Google as far as advertising. So obviously Google Chrome became very popular. It became the de facto standard as far as the web browser most people used very quickly. But I don't think the rise of Google Chrome necessarily is the reason for Firefox's demise because there's still so many people. There's a not an insignificant amount of people out there that would use Firefox strictly for philosophical reasons. Maybe you like free and open source software, the ideology behind the free software movement, the open source movement, or some people would use it out of privacy reasons, uh, security reasons. Some people would use it just out of spite because they don't like Google the company. You know, there are many people that would gravitate to Mozilla Firefox still, you know, but the problem is Firefox just as it hasn't done a good job to cater to the crowd that wants an alternative to Google Chrome. I think what is especially damning is the fact that open source software in the last 10 years especially has exploded in popularity. And you have these companies that traditionally were very anti-open source like Microsoft and Google and Meta, yeah, to various degrees. But, you know, all of these very large trillion dollar companies now are on board with open source software. So as open source software has gained in popularity, a lot of pieces of open source software, for example, the Linux operating system is also exploding in popularity. Like we're seeing major gains on Linux on the desktop even, right? We're seeing major uh, adoption. But 
Firefox is not seeing any adoption. In fact, it is losing tens of millions of users like every year. Why is that? I think the biggest reason is that Mozilla just doesn't cater to that crowd that would use their product. And we're talking about the people that you know, love free and open source software as far as the ideology behind it. We're also talking about people that are really serious about privacy and security, because when you first install Firefox, if you go to the download page for Firefox, if you go to the, the homepage for Mozilla Firefox, you know, you, immediately, you know, they state up front that they're all about your privacy, all about your security. And it ends up being total and complete BS when you actually look at the product that they're giving you. Because what is the default search engine in Firefox? Well, it's Google search, right? And Google search, do you think Google search is privacy respecting? Obviously not. All of the Mozilla website and Firefox website and everything, it's full of Google Analytics. It uses the Google double click service so that they can track data so they, they can see how well Mozilla's marketing campaigns are doing. Firefox sends geolocation information to Google. Firefox uses Google's uh, safe browsing service. That's that thing that you know tells you if you're potentially viewing a malicious website or downloading something that could be malicious. You know, there's a lot of Google tied into Firefox. Like it's like everything that's running in the background that you don't know about. It, it's like all Google services all the time. And that's really weird for a browser that claims to be privacy focused and security focused. Now, to be fair, I understand why Mozilla has all of these Google products and Google services tied into their web browser. Google pays them money. Google pays them money to use the Google search engine by default, right? Google gives Mozilla, I think $500 million every year. And essentially, Google is the only thing keeping Mozilla afloat. And the reason Google is doing this is not because they like Mozilla or they like Firefox. What Google is doing is Google really doesn't have any serious competitor as far as web browsers. And they don't ever want to be in a situation where they're considered a monopoly. So they're trying to keep Firefox alive. But even all of that money that Google is giving Firefox, it's not working because, again, Firefox, you know, its popularity in the last 15 years has went from about 33 percent down to like 2 percent. Right. It's just been a steady decline to where, you know, more than 90 percent of the people that used to use your browser don't use your browser anymore. Another big concern for those that are focused on privacy is the fact that Firefox, its default privacy settings aren't great, right? It's, it's not really uh, privacy focused out of the box. You got to go in and play with some settings to get, you know, serious about your privacy and your security. Also, uh, the pocket integration, there is a service called pocket that displays like news services and you can save news feeds or whatever. I, I don't really understand the whole thing about pocket, but I do know this pocket has some serious privacy things going on with it. as far as its privacy policy. It collects data on users and that's concerning. Again, why is that integrated into a web browser that all over their site, they say, hey, we're focused on privacy. We're focused on security. And but it's all lip service. You know, there, there's a difference between between what the website says and then what the product is actually delivering. One of the problems with Pocket is that it uses cookies. You know, again, it's, it's data mining you, right? It's, a, it's tracking you. The other thing is Firefox itself has some built-in telemetry, right? So Mozilla itself is collecting a little bit of data on you and then the telemetry is opt out. Like if you want to get out of sending this information to Mozilla, you have to go and opt out of that instead of opt in, which I think, again, it's kind of weird. If you're privacy focused and security focused, you know, like you claim, it's just everything just seems off with Mozilla these days. One of the craziest things happened in 2017. This was when I was still a Firefox user. Again, I used Firefox for like 20 years and I was a big Firefox fan, a big Firefox proponent. But in 2017, I remembered when they just for whatever reason, decided to install a plugin like the, the Mr. Robot plugin in some TV show or something. I, I don't know what Mr. Robot is, but anyway, they just decided they were going to install a plugin in your browser, a plugin you didn't ask for. <laughs> and, you know, obviously the people that use this browser, m many of them are big time proponents of free software, open source software, and they're really concerned about privacy. And then you install a third party plugin in my browser. 
No. Now, what really made me jump ship from Firefox over to Brave was it, the, I saw the writing on the wall. I knew that Firefox was really doomed when they started hinting that it's okay to have some forms of censorship on the internet, which is really, really weird. Again, it's a, a free and open source web browser. You're supposed to be all in on free software, the free software movement. You should be against any form of censorship on the internet. The internet, above anything else, the internet has to remain free. And when you tell people that, you know, some forms of censorship are okay, we got, we got to go out there and, you know, s stop anybody that s spreads disinformation and fake news and, you know, whatever. And that was just, it's like, no, no, like literally nobody that takes free and open source software seriously would ever support any form of censorship. And I don't, I don't care, you know, what political ideology that you subscribe to censorship is never okay if you take the free software movement seriously and the open source software movement seriously. And this is one of the things I've complained about many times on camera is that some of these very large free and open source software projects and foundations, sometimes they all of a sudden, for whatever reason, become overly political. And by overly political, I mean they're taking political stances that have absolutely nothing to do with promoting free and open source software. Obviously, there's a political component to free and open source software, but for example, you know, why are the donations that you make to Mozilla? Because Mozilla has a, a donations page, you know, you can donate to help support Firefox, but none of this money goes to software development. And they tell you up front, your donations to Mozilla, it's not going to help support development of Firefox in any way. It's for various social projects, you know, social activist foundations, projects, things that they're working on to improve life around the world or whatever, which, hey, you know, maybe that's a, a noble goal, but why am I going to Mozilla to donate money for various activist kinds of things? Like if I really wanted to donate money to, I don't know, I don't, maybe a women's rights organization or to help feed starving children in Africa, or whatever, whatever social thing I want to do. Why do I want to do that through Mozilla, a, a software company? <laughs> it's, it's just very odd. It's very odd that so many, especially the free and open source software projects, get into these things. It's like, you're not the right person to be driving those social agendas anyway. You're a software company. And the biggest problem with Mozilla alienating all of the people that would use their browser. So we're talking about, again, the people that are really enthusiastic about free software, open source software, privacy, security. The problem with them alienating that crowd is that Firefox objectively is not a good browser if you're comparing it to Chromium-based browsers. It's just not. Chrome is a better browser. Well, I mean, let's just be honest. I know Chrome, Google Chrome itself, is proprietary garbage, right? It's not free and open source software. But as far as performance, Google Chrome is a better browser than Firefox. Now, thankfully, the Chromium engine is open source, and we do have many open source Chromium-based browsers, such as Brave, which is a fantastic browser. If, you, if you're looking for a really good piece of free and open source software as far as a web browser that just works and it's kind of minimal by design and really just focuses on being a web browser, a really good web browser, and it has a really great search engine, a privacy respecting search engine, the Brave search engine that they created. Again, Brave kind of gets it right. Brave really focuses on free and open source software and privacy like that. They're all in on it. And because they know that's the crowd that they're trying to capture, you know, that's that's that demographic they want because they understand Firefox lost that demographic. And that's where a lot of the Firefox users are gravitating to is they're gravitating to Brave. And as a matter of fact, the CEO of Brave was a former CEO of Firefox. He had a lot to do with the creation of Firefox, the early days of Firefox. So it makes sense why Brave is kind of really the modern day continuation of what what was great about Firefox in the past that's what Brave is doing in the present now for me personally I don't necessarily care that Google Chrome performs better 
It is objectively a better browser as far as performance than Firefox. I've said this many times because I'm such a big fan of free and open source software. I will gladly use something that I know is an inferior product to a proprietary alternative as long as it's reasonably close and as long as it respects me as a user. But in the case of Firefox, Firefox has kind of kind of lost that trust. Also, in a world where things are increasingly on mobile, you know, Firefox on mobile devices, it's not good, right? Your, your Android device, you know, I've got an Android phone. Firefox on the phone was never a good browser, right? But Brave on the phone is actually quite fantastic. And for those of you that don't mind using proprietary software, obviously Google Chrome works on all devices. It syncs well between all devices, which is something Firefox isn't necessarily great at. So I'm willing to use Firefox, even though objectively it's not necessarily a great browser, but you know, it, it better be all in on free and open source software. I mean, that, that's the thing. It has to be all in on free software movement, the open source movement. It has to be truly privacy respecting. You know, you can't just talk about it on your website. You, you've got to actually do the thing, right? And you can't talk about censoring people. You can't you can't ever come out with anything that just immediately, you know, like 90 percent of the people in the free and open source software community are just going to be staunchly against because that is really in the end what killed Firefox. And it's not coming back at this point. Again, you used to have 32, 33 percent market share, browser market share, and you've taken it all the way down to two percent. Those people are never coming back. And this is kind of human nature when people get angry at a product because of you know it did something that you know, they didn't like or it just doesn't work as well as it used to when people you know that used to use a product leave it for something else they find a better alternative they don't come back and then that's just seriously it you know a, a brand new open source browser starting today would have a better shot than Firefox because it doesn't come with all of that baggage from the past that Firefox does. Because there are a lot of people when they get angry at something, you know, a piece of software, you know, this didn't respect my privacy in the past. I didn't like the Mr. Robot plugin, whatever it was, whatever drove you away, whatever made you leave. You're never going to forget it. Some of you will never forget it. You're never going to go back. And I, I just... At this point, I consider Firefox a dead project. You know, it's not coming back. And I, I've kind of you know, it's out of mind. And a common question that I get from a lot of you guys, especially you guys that are fans of Firefox, that still use Firefox, promote Firefox, I get this question all the time. Hey, DT, you've got to switch back to Firefox. You've got to use Firefox. You've got to promote Firefox on your channel. Keep talking about Firefox because it's important. If we want a truly free and open web, you know, a web that Google doesn't control, we have to support Firefox. And I get that. But guess what? At this point, it, that, that argument doesn't make any sense because Firefox, again, it's a 2% market share. It doesn't matter anymore. Literally, if Firefox doubled its user base tomorrow, it'd still only have a 4% market share. So at this point, yeah, like we, we lost that battle. Like if we wanted to fight that battle, Firefox is not the one that's going to win that battle for us. At this point, we need to hitch our wagon to a different horse. Like if we want something that's not Chromium based, but is still a free and open source browser. I know there's nothing else out there right now other than Firefox, but who knows? Maybe one day somebody with some deep pockets that really loves free and open source software, but thinks they can compete with Google. Who knows? Maybe we'll probably get some alternatives in the near future. But for right now, I understand. Yeah, Mozilla is it. But but again, that's that's not a real alternative, because at this point we can consider Mozilla almost irrelevant. And I know I'm going to get some comments. Hey, DT, you're just a, a Firefox hater, even though obviously I use Firefox for 20 years. I'm still going to get those comments. No, I'm just a, a realist. And I've always told you guys this. You can't live in imagination. You can't dream of this utopian view of the world, right? I'm, I, I'd love for Mozilla to have 100% market share and free and open source web and all of that. But honestly, I'm a realist. I, I see what's going on and I can accept it. And at this point, Firefox is largely irrelevant and I've moved on. Anyway, just my thoughts on the matter. Peace, guys.